Welcome to the Palace Theater for another episode of the Palace Sessions. I'm Sean Allen, Director of Marketing, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today to our historic Performing Arts Center. Now for today's performance, you can make a donation to support the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. To make a donation, just scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen or visit afsp.org backslash uAlbany. Now to the reason we're all here today. You know him from his film roles in Rookie of the Year, the American Pie movies, and his newest film, Adverse. He's been touring and recording for the past 10 years, playing throughout the United States and in over 12 countries, and is currently working on releasing his seventh album with the Thomas Nicholas Band. Please welcome Thomas Nicholas. I just want to say really quick before we start this first song, uh, I'm excited to be here at Palace Theater for the Palace Sessions in support of a great organization, the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. So if uh, you want to look more into that from either side of the scope, whether it's support or anything that you need, I definitely recommend that. And uh, in the meantime, I am going to do my support of the AFSP by singing for you. This is from my first album. It came out in 2008. It's called Without Warning. by inside the blink of your eyes but don't look you will never find what you want until it finds you come without warning Time for caution, nothing to fear, nothing you'd see. It comes without warning, like something familiar, but nothing that I 
was expecting to meet. Right on. Well, thank you so much uh, for being here with us. Um, that's one of my favorite songs off the uh, first record. And uh, more recently, uh, since I am working on my seventh album, I released a, a frat party album. And since, you know, so, so many people know me from the American Pie films, this seems like the appropriate follow-up to uh, that previous song that may be a little bit heavy, a little serious. This one's a little bit more fun for you. And um, this is sort of my opinion of who the hottest actress is in all of the American Pie films. So, Tara, I'm sorry. I know you don't like when I sing this song, but we're going to do it anyway. Stifler's mom has got it going on. 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 Stifler, can I come over after school? After school, we could hang around by the pool. Hang by the pool. Did your mom get back from a business trip? Is she there? Is she trying to give me the slip? Give me the slip. No, I'm not the little boy that I used to be. I'm all grown up now. Baby, can't you see? Stifler's mom has got it going on. She's all I want. I waited for so long. Stifler, can't you see? Vicky's not the girl for me. No, I might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stifler's mom. Stifler's mom has got it going on. Stifler's mom has got it going on. Stifler, do you remember when Finch mowed her lawn? Mowed her lawn. Your mom came out just to towel on. I could tell she liked me from the way she stared The way she stared And the way she said You missed a spot over there Spot over there And I know that you think it's just a fantasy but Since your dad walked out, your mom could use a guy like me Still loves mom, she's got it going on She's all I want Wrong, but I'm in love with Stifler's mom. Stifler's mom has got it going on. She's all I want and waited for so long. Stifler, can't you see? Vicky's not girl for me, no I might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stifler's mom, ah, I'm in love with Stifler's mom, ah, wait a minute Stifler, can't you see, Vicky's not the girl for me, no I might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stifler's mom. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it was a fun one. I recently played a show with uh, Jarrett Riddick from Bowling for Soup. They did a cover of Stacy's Mom, but he had fun singing Stifler's Mom with me. Um, and who knows, we might be doing a TikTok thing soon where I cover his song, uh, the Bowling for Soup song, 1985. But I might, I might replace some lyrics and sing about 1999 and all the cast or the characters from American Pie, just for fun. Just for fun. If you can't tell, I like to have a good time. 
even if we aren't together in person. Um, still been having a good time. I can't believe we're still doing virtual concerts two years into this thing, but um, you know, today is for a good cause for the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. And I think with all this lockdown stuff, we unfortunately need uh, their efforts more than ever. So, um, you know, we're just kind of learning, learning a new way to make it through this together. So when I did the uh, Frat Party album, I recorded it at the Foo Fighters Studio 606, Dave Grohl's studio. Uh, Dave wasn't there, he was on vacation with his family. I just borrowed one of his guitars. Um, but this is one of my favorite Foo Fighters tracks, and uh, the Frat Party album is all of my favorite songs on the American Pie soundtracks, and I believe this was on the American Wedding soundtrack. Like these, learn to live again. It's 
times like these to give and give again. It's times like these to learn to love again. It's times like these time and time again. Great. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us uh, for the Palace Sessions. Again, my name is Thomas Nicholas. All across the country, students like me, like me, like me, are walking together to bring suicide and mental health out of the darkness. The Out of the Darkness Campus Walk shows you that you're not alone. Everybody has these struggles and it's okay to talk to people. Talking really helps a lot. There's a lot of other people out there who are struggling and they're here. They've made it out of the darkness and they're here to help you find your way too. Walk with us. Walk with us. Register today at afsp.org slash campuswalks. I'm stoked to be a part of this, doing this for a great cause for the AFSP. And uh, make sure you check it out, support, um, or, uh, you know, whatever you need. They're there for you. The largest organization focused solely on suicide prevention. This next song is off of my... Uh, Fifth album, I believe. No, yes, fifth album. I don't know. I'm losing count. One of my favorite ones, one of the only ones we've ever pressed to vinyl. And I produced it uh, with my best friend, Matt Kennedy, who you may know from uh, The Dangerous Summer. Anyway, this came out in 2015, and uh, I'll stop talking, and I'll play it for you. in the back, right in the back. All you'll ever be bad memories.
Thank you so much. Oh, man, this is uh, a pretty cool spot to be singing in the acoustics here. Uh, if you were here with us, if only in the future, you will be here one day with us in person. Uh, but the acoustics here are pretty incredible. Uh, now I know how they can hear like that, you know, lone orchestral instrument all the way in the back because of how everything just kind of spreads out. So this is a lot of fun, um, at least for me. I know you're just probably sitting at home on your computer, but you know, you can visualize with me because you got the visuals behind me. Um, I'm gonna keep this going, I think. I don't know, I'm feeling like maybe, a, maybe another frat party song for y'all. Something to sing along to. And then a couple more originals, you know, keep going back and forth. Uh, I wanna give a shout out uh, to Mark Hoppus who was in, uh, the first American Pie movie. So we've run into each other off and on over the years. So I'll call, loosely call him a friend um, since uh, I've, I have known him for a long time, but he uh, recently just beat cancer. So I wanna give a shout out to Mark and all of his uh, efforts uh, in the hospital. So super stoked for you, my man. And uh, this one goes out to Mark and the Blink-182 crew. so much so I'm gonna do another one I think uh, from my fifth album this one's a fun one and it's funny too because uh, 
sort of the follow-up song to that. I brought this one to a writing session with John Popper when I worked with uh, Blues Traveler back in 2015 or 2014 uh, for their album Blow Up the Moon. We almost started writing on this one. And, um, and then it kind of took a, a turn and then we picked up another track, which I'll do next. Uh, so it ended up coming out on their Blow Up the Moon album, which was also released in 2015. So uh, this song is called Rise Up, which is uh, just sort of a call to action for us all to do the things that we know we need to do, regardless of how we might feel. If we know we need to do them, then that's what we need to move towards. Because what was it? I saw like a, I was watching a film last night, uh, just trying to stay warm <laughs> here in Albany. And uh, there was a quote, I think it, uh, I think it might've been like Dr. Doolittle with Robert Downey Jr. or something, but it was like, when you help someone else, you help yourself. And I thought that was a, a pretty awesome message. So this is a call to action to helping others. We all, we all feel those incl inclinations but maybe we've been burned or something and you know we don't want to do it again, but we always have to face each day as it is new. As I mentioned, 
This is the song that I wrote with John Popper and recorded with Blues Traveler. It's called All The Way and it came out on their album, Blow Up The Moon, in 2015. It was a, a pretty wild story, actually, how it all came together. Got a phone call from their manager, an offer to write with them. Had to fly to New Orleans from Los Angeles, like, with 24 hours notice. And um, somehow wrote a song in <laughs> one night and then recorded it the next day with the band in the studio. So I know I don't have John Popper here at the Palace Theater to uh, rip some heart for you, but uh, I'm going to play the song for you anyway. is a game I'm stealing this time to say that I'm the one you need lost in a smile for just a little while so that my heart bleeds I'm Sandra Goldmere, and I'm the area director for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention's Capital Region New York chapter. And that chapter um, encompasses 15 counties going all the way from Columbia Green in the south to St. Lawrence, Franklin, and Clinton County all the way to the Canadian border. AFSP is the largest um, 
suicide focused organization in the country. Um, and we deal a lot with all aspects of suicide prevention, everything from um, supporting people who've had a suicide loss um, through our program called Healing Conversations, which brings actual other suicide loss survivors to connect with them. We also do a lot of education about suicide prevention, helping people identify the signs that somebody might be struggling with their mental health, as well as programs for our teens and our youth to really just change how we talk about mental health long before the moment of crisis so people don't get to crisis. We are okay. always looking for volunteers. We give, um, almost all of our programs are run by volunteers. I am the only paid employee in 15 counties. Um, and so we really depend on active, involved volunteers, and they can do a variety of things. Everything from people who are interested in helping to work with businesses to get them engaged or learn how to present our programs either virtually or live to schools, to community groups. If you're part of a business or a community organization and you're looking for somebody to speak about an, this important topic of mental health, which has become even more important during the pandemic, um, we can come and give a presentation or um, do some education for you. We're also always looking for volunteers for our events. We do what we call out of the darkness walks, both on college campuses throughout the district, throughout my chapter, um, but also we do one in Saratoga, one in Lake Placid, one in Schenectady, and one in either Columbia or Greene County every fall. And so we look for people to walk with us in community, whether you have struggled with mental health yourself, whether you have lost somebody to suicide, or whether you just want to support the cause of mental health. Um, and the reality is that by the time you are an adult, almost everybody knows somebody who has died by suicide. And so this is an issue that touches everyone. Um, and the reality is that people are really open to um, supporting causes like American Cancer Society or other causes, even if it has not personally affected them because they know someone. We're trying to change the culture so that um, everybody can stand together and say mental health is critical and important and we walk together so that we don't lose one more person. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's uh, a few uh, crew members here and uh, uh, the uh, representative for the American Foundation of the Suicide Prevention. Each In between each song, I get to hear a few people making some noise, which is always much better than sitting in my own uh, house in front of my computer screen, which I have done a couple of times uh, for some Albany online events, uh, including some other charities that we've supported over the past year or so, thanks to my friend Keith, um, who's here and helped me come in and uh, allowed me to do this gig today. So thank you to my man Keith. It's been a long time of uh, being friends and doing shows. And um, this next song is one of my latest singles that I released during the, the whole lockdown period. I, uh, I started working on album seven, but it was, you know, difficult to uh, work remotely. So I was working with my buddy Johnny Lucas in Nashville. And we released, I want to say like at least seven or nine singles, something like that over the course of it. Um, and this was the latest one that came out August of last year. And I feel like this one kind of has a, a good message. Uh, it's called Whatever It Takes. And, um, you know, if you, you catch the lyrics, you know, I always find, like, what lyrics mean to me, even though it's not necessarily what the artist intended. Um, but, you know, it kind of feels fitting today because we have to do whatever it takes to make it through. Um, and so, you know, that's why today's concert is so important to support the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. And obviously, if you're on the other side of that and you are feeling those thoughts that, I mean, really all of us have had at one point or another. So you're not alone. You can connect with them and not feel alone. So this next song is called Whatever It Takes. Trouble. I'll 
I'll be hiding my heart under my sleeve. You'll see there's still possibility. It's okay, it's all part of the game. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get through, whatever it takes to get through. In spite of the drama, I've been dealing with bad stuff every day. Someday I'll be putting out the flame. There's a simple solution when it feels like the world is closing in. Just breathe, there's still possibility. It's okay, it's a part of the game. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get through. I will hold my head up high as I walk through the fire. I will do what it takes to get through. It's okay, ever it takes, ever it takes. It's okay, it's a part of the game. Ever it takes, ever it takes to get through. takes to get through whatever it takes to get through thank you so much all right i'm trying to think uh what we could do for our last few songs here I was thinking about those, uh, those actual lyrics um, in the second half of that chorus while I was singing them. Because I remember when I was like, I think I was like 14 or 15, you know, you're kind of going through all those changes and everything's feeling different. And uh, I remember like kind of being depressed about it. And I remember having this little note from my mom that said like, you know, if, if things aren't okay, just pretend that it's all right, and then pretty soon you'll forget that it's not okay because you'll kind of fall into that category of things being all right because, you know, when you're positive, posit you at attract positivity, uh, and that's kind of what that line is. So I was just thinking about that because it's like, um, you know, I'll pretend and paint my smile till it ends, until whatever the, the bad feeling is, it's over. And really, I think emotions only... Uh, we're, we're just having a, I was just having a conversation. Emotions only last for like 90 seconds, but we just keep them going. <laughs> we just keep hitting replay on them. Um, I mean, I do it too, for sure. I've definitely hit replay for days and weeks. Um, but man, to know that it only really lasts for 90 seconds, that's, uh, we just have to change the way that we think. Like I said, I got a few more songs for you. I think I'm gonna do uh, my song that was on the soundtrack of American Reunion. And this kind of, uh, you know, goes in line with that. So just like we can pretend that things are all right and then eventually they kind of become all right in certain instances, we can also not give up going towards what we want, no matter how long it takes us to get to achieving our dreams. And this song 
is definitely that uh, that experience for me. Um, I started doing the first American Pie in 1998. And I'd already been playing music for a few years. My first album, which we won't talk about that album, was about to come out. Um, and so I wanted to get a song on the soundtrack of American Pie. And I, I tried, and they kind of said yes, and then it didn't work out. And then we did American Pie 2 a few years later. I tried the same thing. Didn't work out. American Wedding, same thing. So American Reunion was 13 years after the first American Pie. And... Uh, this example of never giving up is, is my experience with this particular song, but I want to share this with you because it's important. So I got the song in the soundtrack from playing a show for everyone, but it took me 13 years to get what I wanted. And the reason I love sharing this story is because you can have anything that you want uh, if you don't give up. So even if it takes you 13 years, like me, uh, make sure that you keep on going toward that dream that you have because you can have whatever you want. So many wasted days that I cannot erase All the games we played growing up in this maze Don't want to hear about how I need to change my ways Don't want to hear about what you really think of me This is my life, gonna live it up Don't waste my time, it's never enough You don't understand my aggravation Don't mess with my generation Listening to my boss telling me how I am always late and how he wants to fire me. Don't want to hear about how I need to change my ways. Don't want to hear about what you really think of me. This is my life, gonna live it up. Don't waste my time, it's never enough. You don't understand my aggravation. Don't mess with my generation. One day you'll see everything that I said I would be. Someday figure it out. Can you hear me now? Don't understand. Don't understand. Don't understand. This is my life. I'm going to live it up. Don't waste my time. It's never enough. You don't understand my aggravation, but don't mess with my generation. so much oh, uh, so I think maybe one or two more for you again thank you so much uh, for being here and uh, this concert this online palace session is in support of the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention so if you can make sure that you can you support them uh, and obviously um, they are an amazing organization solely focused on suicide prevention, which is pretty awesome. And, um, you know, look, if you've uh, experienced or have come into close contact with someone, you understand how overwhelming it can be. So make sure you support the AFSP. I'm going to do another uh, single for you. This was the single that came out in June of last year. Like I said, I was doing those singles every couple of months. And they were going to be part of the album. 
but they might just, you know, they might just live on their own and just be the singles that they were. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure because I'm, I'm working on some new stuff, which we'll talk about uh, in our, our quick interview after the show. I don't know if that plays, if it plays after, I'm sure, if you want to learn more about me or hear me talk more because I didn't talk enough in between all my songs. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing some really cool collaborations um, through my friend Mark Rose, who you may remember him from Spitalfield. He's got this company called Downright. And so I'm doing some collabs with uh, Ace Enders and some other art artists through their platform. Uh, so more about that, you know, just follow me on my socials if you want to know more about how I'm actually doing. I guess it's going to be an EP instead of an album. I don't know. I just love writing songs and creating. So anyway, this is uh, the recent single, Before Whatever It Takes, called Echo. There's an echo I am the echo that I've seen I want to know the me that you know Cause I've been living in the space between Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, let's see, what, uh, where are we at here? We've got time for one more song, I think. Don't worry, I'm not checking my text messages. I was just seeing what time it was. I don't have a watch. My phone's my watch. Um, 
Let's see, what are we going to do? I've, for years, I've been ending sets, a lot of sets, since probably 2008 with uh, one, of this, one of the songs off of my first album that I still really love. Or we could do another Foo Fighters track, but, you know, I don't know. I'm torn. Maybe I'll do this one. There's no one really, there's only a, f a few crew members here to tell me differently, and they haven't said anything. They're being so polite and, and quiet during all my songs. It's really unnerving to do uh, live stream or, you know, taped things. Because, um, you know, you don't get to feed off of that energy of hundreds of people uh, reacting in the moment. Um, but I am still very thankful that I get to play music during these crazy times. So again, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for to the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention for letting me do this concert in support of your efforts. Uh, and so here's my song, You Don't Know, off of my first album. Again, thank you so much for being here at the Palace Sessions with me. I'm Thomas Nicholas, supporting the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. And uh, yeah, stick around if you want to learn a little bit more about 
me, my music, uh, my films, um, and anything. I don't know. I, it, I don't even know what they're going to ask me, so stick around. Thank you so much for being here. It cost $3 million to build the Palace Theater. That's nearly $48 million today. The Palace opened on October 23, 1931 with 4,000 seats. Today, the theater has 2,807 seats. Movie palaces were designed to make patrons feel like royalty while forgetting their troubles. The theater originally had thousands of lights mimicking the night sky. When the palace first opened, people were amazed to see public telephones in the lounges. The Palace Theater has been the headquarters of the Albany Symphony Orchestra since 1969. The Palace Performing Arts Center was incorporated as a nonprofit to run the theater in 1989. Thousands of people first saw live theater at the Palace thanks to free arts education programs. How's it going, everyone? This is Frank Cavone, and we are back for Palace Sessions 2022, the first episode of the year. We're here with actor-musician Thomas Ian Nicholas. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you for, uh, for having me here. Now, uh, you've been very busy throughout the pandemic. I see that you are now have a Patreon and you're also producing a lot of content for your fans. What is it like adjusting from uh, just playing out live with your full band to now doing your live streams, Creating, like I said, creating the Patreon content and just continuing to songwrite and be an artist. You know, uh, I had done some live stream events prior to, you know, the world shutting down. Um, and I had done some, you know, live performances on just like Facebook Live to promote crowdfunding for some of my previous albums. So I already kind of had a little, you know, foot in the door, so to speak. And I started my Patreon since some of the previous crowdfunding organizations had shut down. Okay. And I started that like December 2019. So I was already planning on adding that into my repertoire. I just ended up after the, after the lockdown, I just kind of leaned on it a little bit harder. And I ended up doing a weekly uh, live stream for the, the patrons. Um, and I did 50, I think like 50 in a row. Wow. Uh, every Sunday, we called it Sunday Fun Day, and at this point, I've done 60 episodes of Sunday Fun Day, which is crazy. That's exciting. Do you do you use the platform to be able to test out new music, or uh, what uh, interactions do the fans have with you through it? Is uh, how's it been, and how's the reception been? I guess. Yeah, it's been really cool. It's a it's kind of a core group, so there's sort of like the outer core. Um, cause it's not like an insane number of people. So it's something that I can really keep in touch with people. So there's maybe like 60 people right now that have been there for over a year. Uh, and then there's like 15 or 20 that come to the Sunday fun day. So there's like the Sunday fun day crew. Those are like the hardcore, you know, weekly, you know, supporters. Yeah. And then there's the sort of the outer ring and it's been great. I've been, you know, uh, on Mondays, I kind of hip them to songs from the archive or try out new material, let them hear it before I finish the mix, um, take votes on like, hey, do you like this artwork or this artwork? So it's been a really fun interaction and I've opened some doors that didn't exist in crowdfunding. In crowdfunding, it was just like, hey, buy this merchandise that exists or is gonna exist and pre-order the album. And Patreon is much more interactive. That's incredible and it sounds wonderful for the fans too. Now, uh, not to, before we uh, wrap up talking about live streaming in general, I gotta ask, obviously we would, we would much rather prefer just live music, but there's gotta be some gains from it. And what do you feel like you've got the most out of doing stuff like this? You know, I think the, one of the, the first things that comes to mind is I'm getting to play some songs, uh, especially for the, for the Sunday Fun Day things, because I'll take requests. I do a Thirsty Thursday oh, okay. re set request list. Uh, and some of the fans will pull out some things that I haven't played live ever. So that's been really cool to play some of my own music from, you know, six albums of releases that I don't play live because maybe they don't fit into the set and they're kind of their own niche. Right. Um, so that's been pretty cool. And I mean, as far as like unleashing other things, it's just opening that door of connectivity that, you know, you're not going to get at a show. You're not going to have a conversation with, you know, a fan when there's hundreds of people in the audience. Right. You're not going to have that one-on-one -on -one sort of chat. Um, so it's, it's definitely been, uh, you know, a cool experience. That's, that's awesome. Now, you mentioned you are now working on your seventh album. Seventh album, seventh album your first one came out in 2008. Yeah. Um, 
that's incredible to produce that much music and and I mean nothing's better than just you know continuing to write and I have to ask you you mentioned you like collaborating on songs and there's a couple songs that you brought up one with blues traveler uh, John Popper and uh, a new song that you are now working on tell us a little more about it yeah uh, I mean I've been doing collab songwriting since the very beginning uh, I played, I think, two songs during the, uh, the Palace Session set that I wrote with Dan Lavery, the bass player from Tonic. Um, and so, you know, some of the first songs from my first album were collabs with Dan Lavery or Chris Chaney, who played bass for Jane's Addiction and, oh, wow. um, and Alanis Morissette. And then, you know, Bruce Kulick, who played with Kiss and uh, Lawrence uh, uh, <laughs> Katz, who played with the Mighty Mighty Boston's. There was all these great collabs that were happening uh, during that time. So I've always loved collaborating because you get more out of a song. You know, two heads are better than one, so to speak. Of course, and it sounds like you're experimenting with different genres in the songwriting process. Somebody like John Popper to uh, the early Novembers. Uh, I mean, there's got to be just, just some magic happening and, and bringing it into the studio. And I got to ask, what was it like working uh, in the Foo Fighters studio? Yeah, that was pretty amazing. My first uh, bout in there was when I wrote the song with Blues Traveler and John Popper, uh, Chan, who's the guitar player, lives in LA, so he needed to track his part because he wasn't with us in New Orleans. So they're like, oh, come with us to the studio. And we went to Studio 606. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And it's not one of those studios where anyone can kind of get in the door. Right. You have to have the connection. And it was through that connection that I was able to go and do the Frat Party album there. I think we were the only guys that uh, were ever brave or foolish enough to record a Foo Fighters song in the Foo Fighters studio. Um, but yeah, so that was a cool collab process. And because of that, I became uh, friendly with Jarrett Riddick from Bowling for Soup. So we may do something together. We're, we've been talking about writing together. And then um, I was talking with a Sanders who played, the early November ended up playing at my uh, do over 40th birthday um, last July of uh, 2021 since I really turned 40 in 2020, but 2020 didn't happen. So uh, it was a do-over thing. So we, I released Whatever It Takes, and he really dug that track and wanted to write together. And because I have so many friends that are musicians that are touring, like my buddy Mark Rose from Spitalfield, yeah. he has this company, Downright. So Downright is like moving into the realm of Patreon. And so now we're gonna do this collab EP together. Uh, and that's how I got to, I was coming onto the East Coast, so I, I decided to work with Ace Enders walked into his new studio. I was the first session of his new studio in Ocean City, New Jersey. We started out, he played a chord. I was like, that's a really cool chord. And five hours later, we had a demo of a song that is probably just really anthemic and really feels good. And we both really, really like what we came up with. And it's just crazy that five hours, like two, you know, a couple creative minds can turn something out of nothing. Right, it's like once you get hooked, eh, eh, time just kind of disappears and 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 what the result comes from it is is I mean you got to be proud of it it's that's awesome and and that's something I admire so you stay busy on all fronts of entertainment and obviously you know you're very well known for your acting and uh, you just recently were uh, the lead actor in the movie adverse that came out in 2021 yeah it was in theaters in February 2021 and then on streaming uh, about a month later, um, you know, so a, a limited theatrical, but it was out of all the films that I've produced, it was the first time that we did a one week uh, platform release and then it got ordered for an, an additional week, which is crazy to think that it did that well coming out of, you know, lockdown and all that. Um, right. Theaters were obviously limited capacity, masks required, and we still got an extra week ordered. Um, and that's a, that's a really cool sort of a uh, through line with today's concert because my character in that film uh, has some mental health issues. Okay. And we see him right in the very first scene, Lou Diamond Phillips is not just his parole officer, I say that for like ease of, of a description, but he's sort of his requirement due to his parole of meeting with someone from, you know, about his mental health issues and his anger issues. And so I've, you know, delved into the mind of Ethan back when I shot this film. So it's really cool to be doing this concert today and, and really be doing something that is giving back to mental health issues. And there's so many people that, especially with what we're experiencing, you know, that we're all going through something at this point with this crazy pandemic. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, human contact is very important in day-to-day -day life. And I mean, 
and I mean, having an understanding of what it feels like to, and then to play the role, I mean, it just has to portray a lot better than if you were just didn't understand what really was going on when it comes to mental health. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as an actor, I've definitely uh, opened, you know, the, the sort of, <laughs> like, put word my heart on my sleeve, so to speak, for roles that I've played, which has, you know, caused me to delve into my own issues when I'm, you know, what I'm pulling from of my own life for a character. And I mean, I, th I think there's some commonality really with mental health. And while, while we're, not everyone experiences the overwhelming nature, I think we can all agree that we all share fear. Uh, fear is a, is a common language of, you know, the human condition. And so, you know, it's just a, a question of how we deal with that and obviously you know, any moment can be overwhelming for us, uh, for anyone. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's important to understand that we, we share some commonality and not to judge one another for what we're experiencing, but simply be there for one another. Of course. And, uh, and, and with that being said, moving into 2022, uh, we, we got a reset, a uh, brand new year. What, uh, what's to expect uh, from Tom, Thomas Ian Nicholas in 2022? in music and entertainment? Um, well, I mean, obviously we've, <clears throat> we've delved on the, uh, or we've, we've touched on the EP that I'm gonna do, the collab EP. The plan is to, to work with five artists uh, and do at least five songs. Maybe there'll be more artists, maybe, I, I don't know. Uh, obviously Ace Enders will be one of them. We already got that first song, uh, you know, done. Uh, and then hopefully Jarrett Riddick will be the second one and there, there'll be some other people that I've got I've got some text messages out too. So I'm not sure that, that album seven will be the, the singles that I released during 2020 and 2021. I may kind of dip into this EP as the sort of seventh release. I'm not really sure yet. Okay. Um, so, but that's what I'm doing musically, writing with uh, some people that I respect uh, their thing and trying to develop more as a songwriter, uh, even though I have released, you know, 37 some odd songs over the years. Um, and then, you know, from, from the acting standpoint, uh, I'm still producing films and that I also uh, work in front of the camera as an actor. And so I've got a couple right now that I'm pitching with my business partner. So Brian A. Metcalf wrote and directed and produced with me uh, Adverse. Oh, okay. That was like our, I think our fourth or fifth production together. So we've got another one. We got an offer out to an actor that I have always wanted to work with. We're waiting to hear what he's gonna say so I can't say anything about it yet. Uh, and then we've got another pitch to one of the bigger companies out there. Again, I probably shouldn't talk about this, but I'll give you a little, you know, a, a broad stroke overview. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they really like the concept, and so we're waiting to hear what their response is. And you never know, there, there could be possibilities with all this nostalgia, like, you know, Cobra Kai, uh, you know, being like this great nostalgic moment for Karate Kid fans. Of course, yeah. Anything's possible as far as like another American Pie installment with the original cast. So I don't know. That's for sure. Never say never. Never say never. And uh, I just uh, I'm excited to see where your where your future endeavors go. And uh, please go follow Thomas Ian Nicholas across all social media platforms. Give a give his Patreon uh, a look and make sure to listen to his music on Spotify. Oh, he's about to put out his seventh album. Thank you so much for doing this and being a part of PAL Sessions. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And if you wanna know the acronym, it's uh, T-I-N Band across all the platforms. T -I -N My name band. is too long for social media, so okay. uh, I had to you know, shorten it, little nickname. Thank you so much again, Thomas. Thank you.